Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, today what we're talking about is... I'm on the wrong side. You are on the wrong side. <laughs> this right. is so weird. It is weird, <laughs> but hey, let's try it. Yeah. So well, today what we're talking about is becoming a flipper. So basically how this came about is I have a friend, a close friend that works for a company. Okay, she works for a really big company, mm -hmm. but she has real estate and she rents it out and she fixed it all up and she really likes real estate. Okay. And she, her father, you know, used to flip homes and her cousins were very successful at it. So, okay. you know, I was talking to her and she says, yeah, that's her passion, you know? And I'm thinking, well, if she wanted to become a flipper and quit a stable job, you know, just something that you know she's getting a paycheck every week right. or every two weeks. Is that how, what a big of a risk is it? Whew. So becoming a flipper. So there's a lot of cons. There's some pros of becoming yeah, a flipper of too. You can, you know, you become, you know, really wealthy really quick if you if you're doing it right. Especially here after the hurricane, the investors are already coming out. I was in a place that was devastated from Hurricane Helene, yeah. and um, there was investors there actually walking the street saying, hey, we'll buy your place. You don't have to do nothing. We'll just buy it the way it is. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, because they see the opportunity now. It's, right. Because the land's worth more money than the houses some, in some cases, which is, is scary. Yeah, so even up in Hudson where I am, what they're going to do is investors are going to come in, they're going to buy the, they're going to buy the ranches, they're going to knock them down and build these million dollar homes. Yep. So at the end of the day, pretty much only millionaires are going to be able to live on the water. I said that in a video I did about yeah. Hurricane Helene. Absolutely. But what I'm talking about with, you know, I didn't give her advice. I didn't say to her, hey, you know what? Quit your job and just become a flipper because there's a lot of cons to it. Oof, yeah, that'd be, that's that, a, would, that would be bad advice to that's, her. That's uh, jumping off the deep end for sure. You'd have to have some stuff in place, I would think, yeah. you know, before you quit your job, you know, that you've got that steady income. Well, the whole in. thing is, she has a she has she has a passion for it. She has a passion. Well, I get for that, it. but she has, she has a passion for it. But you know, it's there's so many there's more cons than pros of becoming a flipper. And then a lot of the homes that we inspect with with flipping houses, the work is shoddy. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously with flipping and whatnot, your goal is to maximize the bottom line. So your now I've seen both sides of this, you know, right. with, I've seen some really good flips and I've seen some really horrible flips mm -hmm. and, you know, but you're, I get where they're going. They, they, they're, they're trying to get the best, you know, bang for their buck. They come in, they buy the property, they renovate it. Uh, you know, we might be jumping ahead here, but you know, typically you see they fix the stuff that you can see, not the stuff that yeah, you like can't see. Yeah, like the kitchen see. and the bathrooms, but then you go up in an attic and you have cloth wiring. It's horrible. You, you, you yeah. have no insulation, you have no Right, they're no not, nothing. they're just polishing almost. There's a, there's a lot more to it. So basically, hey, in the meantime, do me a favor. Uh, consider subscribing to this channel. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And give it a thumbs up and share. And the person that we're doing this video for is still not a subscriber. And I, I keep asking her, become a subscriber, become a subscriber. So now that I'm doing a video just for her, become a subscriber. So Bill, one of the biggest things with flipping is the financial burden. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, well, there's a lot that goes into that financial risk and burden. You know, number one, you have to kind of, when you're looking at the property, you have to future cast. You know, you've got to think about how much, A, how long are you going to hold the house right. before you can start generating have, income. Because you have carrying costs too, taxes, you know, insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, there's a lot. So when you, how much are you going to, how long do you have to hold the house before you can either A, put it back on the market or rent it out? So, and then you have to figure out how much renovation costs are going to be. And then there's, you, you know that as soon as you start opening on what you're going to find more stuff than what you think you're going to do. So you kind of have to you yeah, really I, over. I, I spoke to a lot of people that do flipping and they usually run 20% over budget. I could see that all day. So they, so in essence, that says that you should at least budget. If you think it's going to be X do 20% more and you should be a little bit better shape when, you know, but that's where you don't know what's going to happen. 
So you almost really need to get in there and really take a deep dive into the home. Now, when you're talking additional costs, you've got Obviously, if you're doing a loan, either if, maybe even a short-term yeah, loan. Yeah, finance costs, hard money loan. Yep, if you, especially like a hard money loan where mm -hmm. you've got a very short period of time with a very steep interest rate before you have to and probably a balloon. pay the bill. Yeah, yeah, and so you've got that taxes, insurance. Now, remember, this is not your primary home, so you know you're going to have capital gains typically if you flip the house over. So you, that all that has to go into your calculation when you're. Looking I mean, talk at to that. accountant and that. I mean, like yeah. 1031 exchanges and all that stuff. Talk to your accountant. We're not accountants, but also let's talk about market. You know, the market could change. It could go soft. You, I see so many flippers, especially here in Florida. They went in, they bought these homes, they put money into them, and then the market changed on them. And some big ones, some, you know, the really, really big players, you know, like, uh, what is that one? Uh, front door, whatever it is. Open door. Open door. Yep, open door. Yeah, so, the, yeah, there, there is some of them homes. I looked them up. They're selling for less than what they paid for originally before they did the flip. Yeah, some of them they did take a loss on. Yeah. Um, you know, typically when you're looking at, there's, and there's a lot more of those programs. There's a whole bunch of those programs other than just those, uh, the, the more name brand ones that you see, there's a lot of those. So, you know, they're buying at 20, 30% below market value. And then when a lot of times when they go and have their home inspection done, now the things that they think they need to fix, they're knocking that off of how much their original offer is. Right. So that's how they balance their, their book. So that gives them their 20 to 30% spread that they need. Because if they say, oh, well, it's going to cost us $10,000 to do the kitchen and the floors, well, they're going to take that off of your offer a lot of times. I've negotiated a couple of those deals. Now, I've also, those deals have helped out a lot of people mm -hmm. that were in a, in a very tough position. Um, so there's good and bad to those. It's not just, you know, all like bad. It's also time consuming to sell these homes. Yeah, so, so you might take what six you might you, you might take six months to sell the home or a year, right? But even. that comes into the investigation portion of it. Mm -hmm. Don't just look at what the market is right now, especially coming off the heels of you know the unicorn years. Really take a look at what happened prior to COVID and the 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 boom, so that you know where we stand on days on market you know, what the percentage from offer to sale price is, you know, those are all things that you need to really look hard at because you don't want to be upside down when you sell the house. No, that's crazy. Plus, you know, the big thing too, becoming a flipper, you know, and I, I know she knows this, but you got to find the right deal. You have to find the, the house that is the right house to invest in and you have to get a really, really good deal on it. Yeah, you know, and yeah, everybody thinks you know. A lot of people think that they're going to buy a house and they can put some paint, some carpet, some you know vinyl down, whatever, and they're good to go and they're going to flip it. But there could be a lot more problems. Right. In some cases, that works, you know. But those are so far and few between, just from the investors that I know and just remodels that I've done over my years. Listen, I invested in homes. You invested in homes. Basically, we were flippers, kind of. You know. Oh yeah. And. Like some of these houses, one of the flippers, like I went in and inspect. He's like, "Oh, this is the perfect house." He didn't realize the house had, because inexperienced, polybutylene plumbing, <laughs> and solid strand aluminum. That's an expensive oops. Huge oops. He got a good deal on it, but he waived the inspection. But then they were running into problems, so they said, "Hey, let's send Jimmy in and take a look at it." So now he had to rewire the whole house. Mm -hmm and he had to redo the plumbing it's very expensive yeah it's and very expensive it, and you know they had issues up in the attic too you know that it's just like it was just if you're going to buy a house to flip become a flipper you really need a good home inspection and a sewer scope and everything yeah you're you know that brings us to really a, another key point that if you're not experienced and you don't understand construction, this doesn't say that doesn't mean that you can't do that, but you need to have the more inexperience you have with construction and building and that kind of knowledge, you need to have a stronger team on the other side of that to help you. Right. Because 
you're not doing the work. So you're going to have to hire a contractor. You're going to have to hire yeah. plumbers, electricians, and have all those people. And you know, they're, they've got their own businesses to run too. And some people, if you're just picking people up, sometimes they're not that reliable. They don't show up. Another job runs over, you know, which causes you delays. And now you have more delays because you can't step in and do certain things. Just stuff to think about. And it's stressful, you know, like, oh, of course it's stressful because, you know, with this particular girl, she was getting the room, the place ready just for renting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she needed more help to get it rented. You know, because there was still stuff to do, paint, whatever, clean, and all that stuff. So imagine the stress of just getting something that you already own, and you have to compare it to flipping a house, the stress that would bring. Right. You know, and then you could get stuck. So you really need to look at your rental rates, too, what you can hold it. If you have to hold, you have to see if you can get money that's back. The, that's a good point, because if you if you buy a flipping a, a house to flip and you can't sell it, you might have to rent it, Airbnb it, or Something. whatever. Yeah, yeah, because you're gonna at some point you're gonna reach that peak where you don't that it makes monetary sense to not sell it because you're gonna lose money versus hold it for a year or two and rent it, break even for that year or two, let the equity gain. That's a good point. I'm a believer in that because even in my investments, you you buy them, you fix them up, you rent them. Mm -hmm. Okay, like the house I did in Tarpon Springs. Yep. I rented it for a while. I rented it for what, two, three years. I bought it when the market was down. Down. And I bought the other house. And then I rented it for three years. Once that market went up, I sold it. Right. And I, I made good money on it. Yeah. You're not, it's not a get rich quick scheme. No. That's what everybody has to remember. This is not, you might make. Yeah, there's tax implications. Yeah. You might, at the end of the day, you may make five or $10,000 on your first flip. And be like, that's not, doesn't seem worth it, but you gain more experience and you learn more and then you start to hone your craft. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got a job as an, ex like in our example here with this, this person, maybe stay working, you know, and then you build a good team underneath you. So you still have income coming in and then you're just going to have to work double hard your weekends, nights, mornings. Well, okay. So now that you're saying that the, the person that's buying the, the house to flip has to have some skills. You know, to do, do it yourself, some stuff? That would be smart if you know some stuff. Um, but I mean, there's people that don't know construction type stuff, but they're good at de interior design and layout and they have that vision of colors and, you know, putting everything together. From oh, she's definitely, she's, she's definitely good at that. Yeah. So but, you just have to have a solid team on the other side of that. Right. You need, you need support. Yeah. And then that's where you could actually probably work still, depending on how flexible your job was, because you could go in the more, you, like I said, you're going to have to double and triple up your daily hours. Right. And you're going to be working on the weekends. You know, it's not an easy task. But yeah, but the skills is really, really uh, important, you know, and then you, you have to be good, you know, just people are going to still come in and, and lowball you when you want to sell it. You oh, have to be course. a good negotiator. I see a lot of times when buyer customers of mine have actually made offers on renovated homes that are, you know, flipper homes. Um, they've got their bottom the, the the seller has their bottom line because they know how much they really want to make and then a lot of times when they don't they're not willing to negotiate over a few small things or come down off their price a little bit yeah because they've they're a little proud in the market which is fine because that's strategy is to go a little bit high so you have some room to back right. down I, I understand that but i probably 50 50 shot on most of this if they they dig their heels in in the beginning they're usually calling me back in a month or two because they aren't able to sell the house because the house is only worse what the house is worth and that and you know, and some of these were some pretty experienced flippers, but in a market that shifts so rapidly, like it has recently, you kind of have to look at that and take that into consideration when you're doing this because they could have closed on the deal. They ended up, what ended up happening is they sold the house for less money than what my customer offered. Yeah, here's another one, okay. There's other investors they went in they worked so hard. I'm talking about the months it took them yep. because they did every, They tried to do everything themselves to save money. At the end of the day, the market shifted mm -hmm. and um, they sold it. They made like $12,000. But then if you take the 12,000 that they made mm -hmm. and compare it to the hours they put in. <laughs> but you can't do that either. Yeah. That's the problem. Like you go hourly and now you're like, oh, I made, you know, 
seven dollars an hour because of my hours that's the trade-off in the beginning you know you're going to put more sweat in until you get better yeah it's just the way it is yeah you, you need a crew in yeah. order to become a successful flipper i i think that you need to have your own crew everything ready so they go to one house knock it out go to another house and you have really really deep pockets and you have to be willing to lose the money that you put into it right because and then make sure true is also make sure that you have the ability to convert if you bought it maybe a non-conventional loan if you did you know like hard money make sure that you have the ability to convert that into a conventional loan so that if you do have to rent it out you can at least make your monthly payments you know until things get done because sometimes that's what you're going to have to do right so and there's pros of becoming a flipper too. You can make a lot of money. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, especially now, like, you know, this hurricane's hit. These investors know what they're doing. They're going to come here, they're going to buy pennies on the dollar, some of these, because yeah. it's, um, people just want out of these houses. They're destroyed for the second time, and they're like, I'm done. Right. And these are bigger corporations and yeah, companies coming companies. in. These are not, this isn't the you and me's coming in here to, you know, yeah. we might be able to pick up a, a, a property or two, you know, that is a good deal mm -hmm. that you and I could work on or something along those lines. Um, but these are, and, and those opportunities are out there for sure, especially if you have the, the um, expendable capital to do that. Uh, but really kind of understand that because now you're talking you know not only are you talking just the construction side of things now you're looking at permitting yeah you know um there may be zoning issues you got to tear down the old house and that's really expensive yeah you're talking about these ones over here that have been yeah. condemned yeah yep that have been just tear downs um you know and then you're also talking engineering and architect fees on top and of impact it. fees you know to well to just to design the house mm -hmm. you know and then you once you do that then you submit it and you have your impact fees you know from the county based on your plans so there's just a lot of moving parts and if you don't understand that stuff you could really find yourself in hot water you know so you know maybe a tear down is probably not the way to start you know just maybe a like, hey, we're going to put some new windows in, you know, gut it. And so, so at the end of the day, yeah. so at the end of the day, if she wanted to become a flipper, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? This is what I think that she, if I was her, what I would do. I would buy a place that doesn't need a lot of work, that has really good location for oh, yeah. Airbnb or something like that. Because, yeah. You know, and I would, you know, design it because you know she loves designing and you know putting furniture together and painting it and do all that stuff go in there make it beautiful airbnb it being a place that people want to airbnb you know like mm -hmm. a touristy place like you know florida or whatever and then once the market is really peaked then sell it because then she didn't have to put a lot of work into it she was making money off of airbnb you know, I'm not I'm not saying to do something like, you know, lease it out for three years or something like that. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that. I'm just saying Airbnb in a short period of times. Like do short term rentals. Short term so, rentals. Yeah. So even shorter mid term rentals. So a mid term rental is 30 days or more. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the county, there's very few places now that will allow short term rentals mm -hmm. that are, you know, anything that's under 30 days. So even if you have to short term rental, which is good because you can make a lot of money in short term rentals. Yeah. Um, and now I've talked to a lot of people when we've broken down the math and just some customers that I've helped out. And by the time you pay the taxes for your short term rentals and things like that, um, because the taxes are higher, everything's a little bit different on the short term side of things. And plus, you have to turn the property. But it depends on the state, right? In the county. Well, yeah, 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 it depends. But I mean, pretty much everywhere here. Yeah. Like it's 30 days. OK. There are very few places that aren't there. Are, there are some places that you can do. There's places in Tarpon, Dunedin, Palm Harbor, Largo. There's there's pockets where you're allowed to do it, particularly when you get closer to the coast. Mm -hmm. um, but and then the associations have rules. There's condos that don't allow anything under 30 days because yeah, they sure. just don't want that transient type you know so you find out, out the rules the hoa rules and find out that there's a lot that goes into this yeah you know anyways at the end of the day what do you think Sh should she quit her job and no become? like do one <laughs> first like like no but an easy one yeah you may make she didn't say she was going to quit a job i was just saying i'm just saying <laughs> if that's her passion yeah you know, it's fine i get it it's your passion but you know you don't want to live in the under this tree either yeah you know what i mean so 
do your passion. But on that note, actually, yeah. you know, remember, it's your passion to do this, but this is a business now that you're not decorating your house. Right. Because I do see people go in and put the fancy, really nice crown molding and all this other stuff that goes into the, to the house, and they don't get their money back from it. When they're, when, this is a business. You obviously want it to be nice looking because you can get more money, but you can also over improve the property for the neighborhood. Yeah, I think the Airbnb, buy something that just needs paint, carpet, and furniture and design. Airbnb it short term and make some money, wait till the market changes a little bit, then sell it at the peak. Yeah, or buy something, do even do long term rentals because kind of where I was going. Well, was like, how, how long a term? You're one year about? at a time. Yeah, one year at a time. Right. Remember that. One year at a time. I don't know who would say. I would never. I wouldn't even <laughs> offer a lease for more than one year at a time. <laughs> you know, I'd like I, to get somebody because if you put, think about that for a second, if you got a tenant that's not that good, now you're stuck with them, and you do a three year lease, which really there's. I'm not even going to get into the legalities of that, but the the point is, even if you did a, your first one was a short or it was a just a rental property that you know, you break even on and they're paying your mortgage. Remember, just because you're not making cash every month or you're making a little bit of cash every month, they're paying your mortgage. So you're gaining equity on that property, right? Yeah. Now you're an investor. You don't have to be a flipper to be an investor. You don't. You and don't. then you take, now that you, once you establish a uh, rental income, you can actually get a loan on the next property. Yeah. And that property doesn't count against you if you have a, on a, a certain yeah. um, loan products because you don't have, because you have a, a rental history on that property. So it won't count against you to get your next house. And then you it's hold true. that you one. Yeah, like what? You get like 70, you, get, you count like 75% of the income or something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. So, and then you can go, then you can get the next property and do the same thing yeah, over and, and over again. And she should do something like, this area, Tarpon Springs, or you know, so desirable like, areas. Desirable for sure. areas. You Absolutely. Know? Palm Harbor. You yeah. Know? There's there's a lot of options out there, and it just takes a lot of she, she, research. She lives in this area, so she knows the areas. And which, there's pros to that too, being close to where you rent. Very important because you know you're going to have to drive there, and if, unless you're hiring a property management company, which then costs more money, you should be your property manager for a little while and get that's all the documents. That's why I'm documents. saying, that's why I was saying yeah. it should be close to close. where she lives. Yeah, because you don't want to drive an hour and a half yeah. to go give somebody batteries for their uh, smoke detectors. <laughs> Anyways, that's today's video. You have anything to add? Nope, that's it. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next one.